Welcome back guys. We are at Firelink Shrine. If you're following along my first video, we've beaten the Asylum Demon and gotten carried by the Jack Crow to the Asylum. And we are leveling up at the Bonfire. Very different from Bloodborne. You don't have to talk to an NPC to level up. You can level up at any Bonfire you want. So for this initial allocation, I'm starting with Strength and Vitality. Those are going to be the two main stats that I'm going to be dumping points into. Uh, vitality, just like it, like you would assume, gives me more life. Strength will let me hit harder because the weapons that you focus on in this particular build scale with strength. So I'm going down here and this is going to be the first of a couple of different suicide runs where you're technically re really not supposed to do this, but uh, in a Souls game, I mean, you can, you're supposed to be able to do whatever you feel like doing, assuming that you can survive. And um, like in any Souls game in Bloodborne, if you grab an item off the ground, it's yours, whether you die or not. So with that in mind, we're going to be uh, collecting a couple of little random items scattered down here. And then we're going after our prize, which is called a Firekeeper's Soul. Now, the Firekeeper's Soul will let us strengthen our Estus flask, flask so that when you use it, it will restore more health. This is going to come in handy because uh, by default, the standard Estus Flask doesn't really doesn't really heal you a whole lot. This dude just chilling, checking out the view. Londo ruins. It's too spooky for me. Come back later. Sorry. A quick note down here. There's an NPC in this jail cell. And mm -hmm. he's actually a blacksmith. If you find an ember, you can bring it to him. And he can enchant your weapons. He sells some magic stuff too. Sorcery things. Smithing helps so anyways, down here we've got it's basically kind of like a big like underground ghost city thing. Uh, taking care of some of these guys. I don't really know why I'm doing this because I'm not gonna keep the any of these souls that I'm getting from them. Uh, this area has a bunch of ghosts once you get past this bridge down here. That's a bunch of ghosts that uh, you can't actually hit them, your weapon just goes through them, unless you're cursed. And certain enemies can curse you, but when you're cursed, uh, you have less health. And uh, the only other way to attack them is to use an item called a transient curse, which you'll pick one up down here, and it kind of temporarily curses you. Uh, allowing you to actually make contact with the enemies and hit them. And when you come here later in the game, you want to have a stack of them so that you can... Oops, sorry. Uh, so here we'll pick up our first uh, transient curse. Two of them. And... Kind of show the item description here. This little white little glowing things, the souls of the undead. Uh, they're basically the same thing as your uh, blood echoes that you pick up off of corpses and Bloodborne. Uh, they're consumable items of various types and uh, initially these don't really give you many souls when you crush them, but uh, later on you'll find some that uh, they give you significant uh, amount of souls. So that's the item we're going for over, over there and initially it looks like there's no way to get to it from the water. But if you run around here, now here's the here's the first ghost. If you run through this doorway, and just run straight at it. There's a very narrow path. Just straight shot right to it. Just grab it. And sometimes you can get up, get away from these guys. Other times you usually just get knocked off the edge like that. I've gotten by them a couple of times. Usually I just fall off and just don't even try. It's quicker just to die and respawn back at the Firelink Shrine bonfire. You don't really have enough souls at that point to make it worth, you know, worrying about. So anyways, it's time to strengthen an Estus Flask. 
If we look down here, there's a woman behind these bars. Okay. Strengthened. Plus one. The next item we're going to get, we're going to go back down here. We're going to go back down there to the ruins, but we're going to take a different shortcut, different route. The next item we're going for is the red tear stone ring. And what it does is it will increase your attack strength once your health goes below a certain point. So the idea is that if you have this ring equipped and you're getting in yourself in trouble in a fight, it will give you a significant damage increase to your attacks when you're near death. And sometimes that's enough to turn, you know, turn the fight in your favor. There are also speedruns built around this fact where the player knows that there's a low chance that they're going to get hit. So what they do is they intentionally hurt themselves to the point to where, to where they're doing extra damage and it just lets them hit harder and get through the game quicker. So that master key we picked at the beginning of the game, their starting gift, that lets us get in here and I, I highly, I, I would say you have to choose it because of the various areas that it allows you to get into. Uh, it's a key item for, literally, um, for some of these uh, shortcuts and getting to from point A to point B. So you're going to use the key and go over here and there's this big dragon hanging off the edge here and he doesn't move unless you grab an item off the ground in front of him and he is guarding uh, a sword that does magic damage, a shield that absorbs a lot of fire damage and a fairly large soul. So we're going to grab the first item and the second item and die. That Dragon Crest Shield is great because it has a, it has a really significant uh, fire reduction and a good physical damage reduction also. So here I cut to second attempt and if you look over here to the right there's a little pathway. It's easy to miss. There's a little pathway to get you up here. Pick up the souls. I'm going to drop down here in a minute and grab this third and final item from him. And this one you can actually grab and just run back. So we're going to keep on going down here. There's a little narrow path that kind of hugs these cliffs. And these guys at this point in the game, these wyverns, are super nasty. They do massive amounts of lightning damage, physical damage, you name it, they will mess you up in a hurry. So the point is, gonna try to cross that bridge and climb a ladder up a tower to get the red ring, the red tear stone ring. And I made a mistake here by swigging the Estus and giving him a chance to get on that narrow ledge and he knocked me over. And it may seem, that might have seemed like a cheap way to go, but it it taught you that he can knock you off with his tail. And you saw how much damage I took from that lightning. And again, it, the guy, my guy's moving really slow just because of all the armor he's got on there. You see, he just goes whack. And there's a really pretty decent armor set. It's lighter and less defense um, than what I've got on the night set, but it's worth grabbing if you want to try some new stuff out. Uh, unfortunately, it kind of aggroes these guys to um, to a point where it's really hard to get away from them unless you're just not wearing armor at all. And I almost made it up, but not quite. So try this again now that I've got my items I'm just gonna be hoofing it and fast roll mode which I believe is uh, less than 25% item burden 
once you're down that low with your item burden weight, uh, you can fast roll and consume less stamina when you run and run faster. I took this one to the chin just because I knew that if I jumped, I would probably jump off the bridge, so I just kind of dealt with it and ran. Hurrying up this ladder. Oh, oh hell breaks loose below me. So you can equip two rings in Dark Souls, and in Dark Souls 2 you get four. So you see how I'm glowing now? See where my health is? Uh, that gives you a good indication of the ring actually being on now that I've healed up. It's gone away, the ring's no longer working, and I have never lived past these guys leaving this suicide run. I've died every single time, so I'm just going to bonsai down here to plunge attack. And if you remember back in the asylum, I pulled the helmet off and was able to medium roll, which is the less than 50% item burden. Uh, I was able to actually equip that new set of armor, the uh, brigand helmet and the uh, brigand leggings. And I was able to fast roll or medium roll again. Equipping the Dragon Crest Shield. Now it's time for our next next suicide run. It's not really that hard to survive if you know where to go. Uh, I'm gonna grab an item right here real quick. But behind Firelink Shrine, there's a graveyard with a lot of skeletons. And at this point in the game, they hit really hard, which pretty much everything hits hard. There's a lot of items uh, scattered on corpses through this uh, graveyard. That one's not really that important. Maybe not worth aggroing those skeletons over. The real prize is uh, a big sword up here. Which, technically, I really don't use a whole lot. Uh, because I think this is why hinder It's the... Just as massive ultra great sword that does absolutely insane poise damage you can stagger even the strongest enemies so here there's a little pathway that you can stick to but you have to grab and run because those skeletons they don't give you much time uh, to escape and they will chase you all the way up here to the bonfire they're relentless good thing is, is if you sit at the bonfire you will reset all the enemy positions or all their all their spawns so they'll go back to where they initially were and you see how they're up here chasing me up here at the upper level and I decided it was getting a little too crazy grab some humanity and I counted a weird bug here in a second. There's that giant skeleton back there, but watch this. This is really weird. I've never seen this before. I can't activate it. Now I can. But look at him in the background, just like. What? What? So. Alright. Skeletons are gone. And now it's time to grab a couple of extra items here at Firelink, and then we'll be on our way to the actual intended beginning path. That guy's kind of a butthole, you don't have to really talk to him. Got a quest line later. Um, I didn't, um, I didn't drop down, but uh, right back there, 
there are two archways. Um, you can actually drop down and go through a little archway. It's kind of dark, but you can you can make out the ground below. But if you uh, go through that an archway up there, uh, you can drop down and get uh, quite a few items. And I'll show that in I believe it's the next video. Uh, I think it's uh, some souls, the morning star talisman. And maybe a couple of other things. So, start off. We're gonna go up the staircase and start fighting some just some basic hollow warriors. They're kind of they're they're a step above the undead asylum guys. Again, these are this area right here is a great place to learn how to parry. Because you've got the bonfire down below where you can run back once you've run out of Estus if you're just getting uh, if you're just getting beat up and it, you'll you'll probably die a couple of times or at least you'll take a lot of damage trying to get the timing of the parry down um, it's different from Bloodborne in that you have to actually be within melee range whereas in Bloodborne you could fire your weapon kind of kind of a, a bit di a distance from them and uh, still get that uh, stun in where you could go get a visceral attack um, but in in Dark Souls you have to be in their face otherwise your shield wouldn't be able to to parry their weapon these guys with the axes they can initially be a little tricky to parry because they have a longer wind up and uh, it seems like a lot of these enemies have a couple of different attacks. Some will, they'll swing fast and some will have this really long, slow, where they kind of hold their weapon up and it can be a little bit misleading where you can prematurely try to parry the attack. Get out of here. You can kind of, you can prematurely over anticipate the parry and swing your shield too quickly and then they'll get the hit in on you. Um, and other times you can think that they're going to be uh, winding up a little bit longer and just kind of sit there and surprise they hit you with a quick attack. The Ring of Sacrifice. It's really handy if you've got a ton of souls and you're not really close to a bonfire and you want to keep going. You can put this thing on and instead of dropping all of your souls when you die, the ring will break, but you'll keep your souls. going up here, admire the weird physics, grab an item, and we're going to head into this aqueduct here next to us. And there's a rat in here. The rats can poison you when they bite you. Um, one bite at this point in the game will do more than half poison. Uh, it'll fill your poison meter up more than halfway, so if you get bit twice, you're going to get poisoned. Also, at this point in the game, I don't think you have any of the moss that uh, reduces or, or cleans you of your poison status. Also, like in Bloodborne, when you're parrying and reposting, you're invincible, so they can swing at you all they want and they're not going to hurt you. The trick is, is, if you're surrounded by enemies and you're Finishing up your parry, you've got to be ready to get away from them. That guy there in the left comes out. He can surprise a lot of new players that aren't expecting him. They get distracted by the firebomb guy and just get blindsided by that guy coming through the door. Uh, not all fog gates in Dark Souls lead to bosses. So I'm just opening up a new section. And if we look down here, there's a corpse with an item. And they've hidden the path with barrels. That guy down there, he's just waiting for us. But 
we're gonna drop down here past these barrels so we can grab the item and if you look over to your right you will see guys hanging off this wall and as you can imagine once you drop down they're gonna climb up the wall and start attacking you but because we know they're there uh, this guy doesn't work but if you know that they're there you can smack the wall where their hands are and they'll drop down and die And that's an easy doorway for a lot of players to miss because it's kind of the geometry of this of this building is a little bit weird. There's another item down there, and I try to get the camera to show a couple more guys hanging down there ready to ambush you. And there's a third guy kind of right there. And that's the guy. You can you can smack that guy, knock him down. I think he might have a, a buddy hanging on next to him. There you can see I'm just waiting for you. Smack and smack. So I'll kind of even the odds here. You versus a two. Two of these. Undead. Not really a problem. And you see, you'll notice me doing a lot of the uh, the jumping attack. And the reason I do that is because it gives you extra range when you're attacking. Um, it does more damage at this point in the game. It can. Uh, one shot several enemies like those undead guys uh, the faster you can kill these enemies the less the odds are that you're gonna get uh, ganked by you know a mob so back through the doorway and one of the coolest moments of the game right here that's the hellkite drake and as you can imagine, not the last you'll see of them. This here can be tricky. This is your first uh, crossbow guy here that's shooting at you constantly while you're trying to kill these guys. And if you're not, if your situational awareness isn't keeping you reminded that this guy is up there while you're fighting these guys, uh, you can take a lot of unnecessary hits. You, know, you see there, I over anticipated it and he held his sword up slowly before he attacked and I over anticipated the parry see how he does that I didn't fool for it a second time but but that whole that, that's just what I was referring to with the parry timing and the different attacks like that's their slow attack and they have their their regular fast attack and they also have their jumping attack which you can also parry And in here, we have another bonfire. Now, lighting the bonfire does not respawn the enemies. Sitting down does. Some more strength. Hit a little bit harder. At this point in the game, this broadsword, uh, it doesn't have very good scaling, so it's not gonna make a ton of difference. But every point counts. See how he staggered backwards, kind of stunned him when he hit my shield. Uh, when he's stunned like that, it gives you a quick window of opportunity to run around behind him and get a backstab in. Now these guys, these guys can be tricky early in this game because they have a shield and they don't put it down unless they're going to attack you. Now your forward and R1 attack does this kicking animation, and if you do that. Um, you can bait them by doing a jumping attack like that, but it didn't really work too well. But the best with, best method to get kill these guys is to backstab them, uh, bait them into attacking, and then run around and backstab. But you get this kicking animation forward and R R1 like that, and it breaks their guard just enough to get a hit in. Sometimes you can get two in. You see, just block, run around, backstab. They're pretty simple once you figure out their moves and the best strategy to bait those attacks block and run around behind them. 
This guy tries to get sneaky with you. And behind us is going to be our first merchant. And he sells some chain armor. Uh, a key well, to a residence, which you don't need because we got the master key. Um, and he also sells bows and arrows. Uh, now, if you if you watch the YouTube videos on how to get the uh, the Drake sword, which is a pretty powerful early game sword, uh, you'll know that basically if you buy the bow and mm, about 150 or so arrows. Uh, he sells a, a few different items, but none of them, none of which are really of note at this point for our particular build. The chain, chain mail can be okay, but um, we've got a suicide run coming up later on that's going to give us way better armor, in-game armor to be exact. Uh, it's the Elite Knight set, which is just the strongest armor and... And Dark Souls, you can upgrade armor. You can strengthen it, reinforce it all the way up to plus 10, or most of it at least, uh, to increase defense and stats and things like that. So unlike Bloodborne uh, and unlike Demon Souls, you can, uh, you can strengthen your armor. And the Elite Knight set at plus 10 is amazing. Or the, the main chest piece, to be more specific. It was the uh, it was the main chest piece that I used uh, in my Gwen fight on my channel for the uh, final boss. Missed the jump. Jump too soon. I messed this business all up. This guy. This was this was a nasty fight. <clears throat> And him being over there up against the wall made it hard for me to get my swing in just because of the move set of this weapon. I decided just to kind of run away, regroup. Pull him away from the wall. <clears throat> and you notice, I mean, I'm parrying at least half these guys. These are the easiest guys to parry in the game because they telegraph their attacks from a mile away. And, you know, like I said, this is a great area to learn because you've got a bonfire close by, lots of enemies. They're, they don't really hit that hard. Um, and they telegraph their moveset fairly, uh, fairly obviously to the point where uh, they're not, they shouldn't surprise you. It shouldn't surprise you when they swing and attack at you. Now, which of their attacks they're going to use, that's, a, I guess, random roll of the dice for the computer. Uh, but when they raise their weapons up over their heads, that's their slow attack, where they sit there for a second before they swing. And the one-handed over the head uh, is going to be their standard swing. So you jump over that uh, broken broken wooden uh, walkway and you can get a free crossbow right here now the, the bow and the bows in this game you can actually aim if you uh, if you equip the bow and dual wield it uh, with the Y button or the uh, whatever the PlayStation top button is um, triangle maybe um, if you dual wield it and then hit your left trigger, it will go into the zoomed crosshair mode. So I'm still fairly squishy at this point, and I believe, yeah, I put a couple of points in or put a point into vitality to give me a bit more HP because this next section over across this bridge <clears throat> it's got, um, it's got a bit more difficulty in it and I'm checking out the Zweihander to see what I need what I need stat wise to uh, to equip that and if it's if it's got a red stat for strength or uh, 
dexterity or whatever it means you're lacking uh, the red number will be what's required and it'll be red because you don't meet that requirement and the weapons uh, they have damage penalties just like in Bloodborne if you don't meet the requirements uh, just for an example a sword that would normally do 100 damage uh, if you lack the requirements it might do 50 damage instead so anyways we're gonna run across this bridge and just kind of chill right here when you come through the door and wait for these guys to come to us there are two guys in the room and then there's gonna be a third guy that opens up a door over here and comes in here and you're safe from the firebombs and you're not aggroing these guys because you don't want all three of them on you at once and there's the third guy And we'll open up this later. The firebomb guys are directly above us at this point. Surprise. Black firebombs. They're basically a stronger version of the regular firebombs that we picked up at Firelink Shrine. So anyways, there's a trio of guys up here. They can be kind of problematic. There's a guy that throws the firebombs at you, and then there's two just regular old melee guys. The best way that I've found is just to just bum rush the guy in the back that throws the firebombs, and then just try to get away from the regular guys. If you take your time, you can, you can make things a little bit harder than they should be and you'll give the guy shooting bomb or throwing bombs at you to you'll give him a chance to really get to you but I open up that door and this item is super important if you didn't choose the master key you would have had to buy the regular residence key from the uh, the merchant that we saw a second ago but anyways that um, that paper that fire or lightning paper that we found the uh, well, it's going to basically buff your weapon with lightning damage. And this is another ugly fight. You see how my weapon is not strong enough at this point to break his poise. So I was just kind of soaking him up and just dealing, you know, just chilling. The regular attack is not strong enough to break through his poise defense and every enemy in the game and you have a stat called poise and that def that basically dictates how much physical damage you can take and not stagger and we're gonna find an item uh, relatively shortly uh, here in, an, in one of the upcoming videos and it's gonna greatly increase our poise that will allow you to really soak up a lot of damage and not get staggered. It's a uh, one of the best uh, rings uh, that the game has, especially for early game. So if we go up these stairs real quick, this guy, there's a guy up here that lights this barrel and kicks it, so if you kind of just creep up the stairs just enough to get him to light it and then run away, then you'll avoid getting killed. Sometimes he dies, when he lights it on fire like he just did. He saw me absorb his souls. And sometimes he just chases you down the stairs. Uh, we'll come through that door later. Ignore it for now. There's a really powerful dude down there that you don't want to really tangle with at this point. So we're going to run up here. I couldn't remember which floor it was, but uh, there's a crystal lizard up here. And it's, it's basically the Souls game equivalent to those little creatures and Bloodborne that scurry away from you. And if you kill them, you get uh, really good uh, materials. These guys do not let you, uh, they don't give you nearly as much time to kill them as uh, the ones in Bloodborne do. So we got some really good loot there. That Titanite chunk's gonna come in handy. Twinkling one, eh, not really so much. Um, so I'm kind of fast forward in here. I'm just going to kind of show you who's waiting down here, but I'm not going to aggro him. 
This is a uh, an enemy known as uh, Havel the Rock, aka Duane, and he's got the dragon tooth and just beast mode armor. Like his poise is through the roof. At this point, it'd be like trying to hit him with a toothpick. So, anyways. This is optional, but there's another very helpful ring. It's the blue tear stone ring down here, guarded by a black knight. These guys are way easier than they look, but your parry skills have to be on point. After I missed the backstab, the parry, you see how they just they telegraph that overhead swing a mile away and just smack it. And you can catch them if you stay close to them after you knock them down clockwork like clockwork they will get up and do yet another swing and just parry repost rinse and repeat until they're dead um, that's I mean this there's no I mean that's the trick that's the secret to uh, killing these black knights um, you know and for a new player Getting the parry timing right for these guys, uh, it's it's uh, it's really hard for a new player to get that parry timing right um, this early in the game, uh, unless you've just done a lot of practicing at Firelink or in the Undead Burg. Um, and this blue blue ring does the same thing the red one does, only it boosts your defense. So when you get down low health, your armor rating will go through the roof. Um, but yeah, getting the parry timing right, um, it can be a little challenging. And missing a parry on the Black Knight usually will get you killed almost instantly. Uh, he hits extremely hard and whiff and firebomb to the face. Now if you remember that shield, we picked up the Dragon Crest shield from the uh, that undead dragon. If I just walked into him with my shield up, I probably would have soaked up almost all the damage. Not really taking much. And I'm just gonna drop down here. I've got a decent number of souls. I think that Black Knight gave us a thousand souls. I'm gonna go and dump in a few stat points because there's a boss coming up and I don't wanna lose them to him in the event that I die. Strength and vitality. No secret, no secret where they're going. Enemies are back, but I'm just running. Kind of, I'm just going to fast forward. It's basically just doing the exact same thing, except for not killing that crossbowman. Did you see that? Finish the parry, and then the crossbow got way in the distance. Actually, shot me. And just after that one shot, he just turns around and goes about his business. What? Whatever. So, all right. Anyways, just cleaning house up here. Again, bum rush those guys. Kill them before that firebomb guy can start doing his nasty stuff. Get the crossbow guy. See if you go past him and start fighting these guys. Guess who's going to be shooting crossbows into your back? And this that third guy that ran down the stairs, he's the guy that normally kicks the barrel down at you. Now you notice the Black Knight's not there. Uh, he doesn't respawn. They will much later in the game, but these early game Black Knights do not respawn. It'd be kind of nice if they did at this point. Uh, if you're good at pairing because you could farm some major souls out of them. But anyways, here's our next boss fight. Uh, you remember that uh, pine resin that we got earlier? Uh, I'll show it here in a second, but first you need to climb the ladder and take out these two crossbow guys because as you can imagine, you don't want these guys shooting arrows at you during a boss fight. Oh, 
I love the kick animation when he's done with it. So, get rid of those. Grab our gold pan. This, again, this shows where we got it from. Use that key to open up the residence. So we take our gold pan resin, equip it down there. And as you proceed forward, the boss jumps down from the tower above. What you need to do is when you see him, immediately turn and run and climb the ladder again. And what you're gonna do, just like that Asylum Demon, you're gonna jump down and get that plunging attack. And you can't wait too long or else he will jump up there at you. And I actually missed him. Well, I got a partial hit in on him there. So this guy is extremely weak to lightning. I mean, watch his health just, just get demolished here. And I got greedy going for the hits. And what was that? I don't have my Estus flask equipped. I still have my pine resin. And a quick panic block. Get out of there. All right, now I've got the Estus selected and a heal up. And this guy hits really hard, but if you're blocking, you should be able to uh, soak up the damage. Your poise is still very low, so you're gonna get knocked down, but you're not gonna get really hurt. So see, get knocked down, but my health isn't going down. So you bait him into that attack, and just when you see him rear back, you can roll backwards, and then go in for a quick hit. And you saw that the weapon just was not doing hardly any damage to him. Lightning buff at least, I think it doubles your damage that you do. So, put that paper, that uh, pine resin to good use. So that is boss number two down, and I'll see you in the next video.